Dude, what's trending in the world right was that Tyler the Creator? In 2000 and the time Tyler the Creator obliterated DJ Kelly. Oh again, wait. This is a story I like to come back to now and again. This is just I I like DJ Khaled and I love Tyler the Creator for way different reasons. The artists of the Tyler I love absolutely maybe like top gear for me like that is bro from music to fashion to bro like movies shows whatnot man's go crazy and Khaled brother is a goofball and a half like he's just good content he's like call me tennis bowl <laughs> Roblox like 19 that man is yapping so much it's funny DJ Khaled picked a fight with Tyler the creator it became the and this was such a funny moment too this is this really showed like how much like uh that that like we are the best music that persona really got pounded for a second and that shit was like oof biggest mistake of Khaled's whole career. But before we talk about exactly what they said to each other, let's first briefly discuss why they began fighting in the first place. Tyler the Creator had gained a reputation for dropping an album every two years, although none of them had ever- Which... We're due. Dropping an album every two years, although- we're doomed, motherfucker. None of them had ever debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. Goblin debuted at number five, Cherry Bomb debuted at number four, Wolf debuted at number three, while Flower Boy debuted at number two. By following this trend, it seemed his next album could be the first to take home the number one placement, provided he could bypass the biggest rat in music, DJ Cap. Oh wait, didn't we get the deluxe this year? Damn, wait, does that mean Rip? That might mean Rip Tyler for the rest of the year. Really? Damn. Ah, you know what, man? He blessed us. Like, if you... bro, the transitions and progressions within all these is insane. My favorite is Flower. Not in the sense of songs. In the sense of, like, progression, that is the one that, like, really showed where everything was going to go. And that his mind was really, like, crafting. I, I love that one. But I love all of them. Goblin, you know, you got to appreciate what it gave, you know? Number two. By following this trend, it seemed his next album could be the first to take crazy. the number one placement, provided he could bypass the biggest rat in music, DJ Khaled. Rat. As hard as it might be to admit, hey, Khaled was definitely rat. more successful than Tyler in terms of commercial performance. Yeah. By 2019, DJ Khaled already had two number one albums, while his most popular music video had almost 10 times the views in comparison to Tyler's most popular music video. With over 50 placements in the Billboard Hot 100, it's no surprise that that Tyler himself described DJ Khaled by stating this his whole identity is being number one. Is we the best? We the we number the one. Which is without a doubt True. the position that DJ Khaled was hoping another for one. when he began to work on another album for release at the same time as Tyler's next project. Titled Father of Assad, DJ Khaled's album was what you might call commercially perfect with a feature from a massive artist on every single song. Jay-Z I still don't think I've listened to that album. I've listened to a lot of DJ Khaled songs. Like you, there's no way you can't because, like Sonny saying, like Tyler said, like I said before the video started, the man has, has so many big hits. Like he's been here for a minute. It's like he's always got some that comes in even nowadays with like Little Dirk or whatever. But this album, I feel like just, just could not keep up with what was going around at the time. Like this was just like, like he said, commercial. Like it just like felt so forced. It was like, eh from a massive artist on every single song. Jay-Z, Future, Beyonce, Chris Brown, Lil Wayne, Justin Bieber, Travis Scott and Post Malone on the same song. The album even had a feature from Nipsey Hussle at a time when he was already dead. On top of this, every song had a full Jeez. team of writers, while in addition to DJ Khaled, almost every track also featured at least three producers. When considering his history, the names, and the clear work that had gone into Father of Assad, DJ Khaled likely thought that he'd easily cooked up another one album when at finally dropped on the 17th of May 2019. That would be until Tyler the Creator on the very same day released Igor. Igor had a much deeper story than any of oh. Tyler's previous oh, albums, out. characterized primarily by his ridiculous Ooh. blonde ah. wig, Ooh. or not for some deep thematic reason, but rather because Tyler simply liked it. Where did the idea for the wig come from? What is Igor? Like, wh why, are we, why are we looking at you the way we are? And well, I just what is it? thought it was cool. <laughs> the tracklist itself was only Hell made yeah. cooler by the fact that each song was written and produced solely by Tyler. Tyler, which when tied in with a unique recognizable album cover, gave it the strength to beat DJ Khaled. Igor number one, father of Assad number two. A result that seemed as- The pink is nice. 
And I think that is the... I can't remember if that's the first time he actually did this, or this was the first time he actually wrote it down. Cause like, I know there was like a lot of songs he produced, arranged, and written, but I don't know, like, album-wise, I don't know if that was a thing. But this really was like impressive at the time, and it fucking banged. Cooler by the fact that each song was written and produced solely by Tyler, which, when tied in with a unique, recognizable album cover, gave it the strength to beat DJ Khaled. Igor number one, father of Assad number two, a result that seemed to surprise even Tyler himself. And this is no disrespect to Khaled or anyone. Everyone, Cardi B, Twenty One Savage, Travis Scott, Post Malone, Beyonce, J, everyone who sells billions of records, and the fact that I beat him with this was. But he didn't have Cardi. Body room. <laughs> crazy. Don't get fucked Tyler's win none. was covered in news article after news Don't article and up. celebrated by those rooting for the underdog. Imagine having 20 Don't features on up. your album just to be I'm number two up. to a man with a synth addiction. Igor out now. Although if there was one person who wasn't too happy about the final result, it was I'm definitely DJ you. Khaled. Bro, my favorite line that he's about to say, I swear if he doesn't put it in, I'd be so upset. But he's like, I make real music, you know, type of shit. You turn your radio on and you hear. When he says that, all I imagine is that Juice World song where he's like, another one. We the best. God did. Juice World did. Home advertisements did. Like, he's just out here fucking shouting everybody out. Like, uh. DJ Khaled reportedly freaked out on, on his label when his album failed to debut at number one. Various sources have now told Page Six that Khaled stormed into his label offices and threw a temper tantrum upon learning that Father of Assad would debut at number two. Per one source, Khaled stormed into Epic with an entourage. He was angry and yelling. Another source added this. He was furious. There was some nasty stuff said. Publicly, he's all about positivity, but there is a mean side to him that people don't see. He overhyped the record and blew it up as his biggest album ever, with this article prompting an instant response from the public in comments roasting DJ Khaled such as, just a thought here, maybe make music that doesn't suck? Who knew <laughs> DJ Khaled had a vocabulary big enough to even express anger? Was about to say we the second best music, but somebody already did that one. <laughs> then again, if there's anything I've learned from DJ Khaled, oh, it's no. to take credit from other people's work by screaming something loudly. As DJ Khaled's temper Jeez. tantrum began to go viral, he'd backpedal in the face of criticism by stating that apparently he was only annoyed at Billboard. DJ Khaled's reported anger about the sales of his album have nothing to do right. with the success of Tyler the Creator, right. which seemed to clear DJ Khaled of any wrongdoing until he'd post this video on his Instagram story just a few hours later. I make albums so people can play it. Right. You actually hear it. You know, Real drive music. your car, hear another car playing it. You know, go to the barbershop, hear them playing it. You know, turn the radio on and you hear them playing it. You know, it's playing everywhere. It's called great music. Oh, great it's music. It's called albums that you actually hear the songs. Okay. <laughs> Not no mysterious shit. Not no mysterious shit. What is he talking about? Bro, it sounds like he didn't listen to the album. Like, he's just hating, just hate. Like, you never hear it. All it also, it sounds like he didn't listen to his album. <laughs> took was a single what? number two placement for Khaled's facade of positivity to completely and utterly crumble. You should never complain. Complain is <laughs> what is he doing? Without saying Tyler's name, DJ Khaled implied that Igor wasn't real music. As a True. See, that's what I remember. He said real music, but then he said great music there. That's what was confusing me. But like, that, he, he just like hating. That's straight bullshit. Like, there ain't no way you can say that. That was the finest... Productions, arrangements, features of the year for sure. Man killed it. Gave the hottest pop, heartbreak, rap shit anyone's heard in a goddamn time. Uh, it was mysterious. And this motherfucker straight another one. Fucking Juice World, bro. I don't know what I cl bro. I skipped the song after you do two. Like after you do two, I'm done. The most I can take is I'm on an island with girls. With a feed out with French vanilla ice cream. Like, that's all I want to hear. I don't want to hear no goddamn uh, Walmart did, Target did, Simpsons did. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> Get to the goddamn point. Like, I. Yes, you apparently. I don't give a fuck. He couldn't like, hear the songs, bro. and it wasn't being played by the cars around him or in any barber shops. His irate video was reposted to YouTube and Twitter, where it received over 65,000 likes whilst receiving comments such as, For someone blessed and humble, he sounds bitter. Man, I was at my barber shop just this past Friday, and they weren't playing his album either. Went from We the Best to We Depressed, leading DJ Khaled to remove Jeez. the video almost immediately. However, it was 
was too late. Everybody had already seen it. The media began to weigh in on Khaled's bitterness by stating, what the DJ slash producer slash not very inventive hype man seems to have missed though, is the fact that the exposure of a record is literally what gets it on the charts. Tyler's album simply did better. The fact is, grabbing a bunch of the most hype names in hip hop, slapping them on a fairly generic trap beat, and introducing each song with the same soundboard another, another one, one, literally just doesn't stack up against Tyler the Creator's innovative songwriting, production, and visuals, while YouTubers such as Anthony Fantano completely mutilated Khaled by stating this. This metric of, well, if they're playing it in the barbershop, the album's gotta be hot. That's kind of an old way of, of looking at things. Khaled's indignant True. whining and complaining here <laughs> is disgusting. Bro, the, the barbershops I'd go to, I don't go to barbershops, but I promise you, if I went to a barbershop, they ain't playing the shit people are playing. Like, there's so many different, like, layers of music nowadays, especially with TikTok and, like, bro, even Twitch sphere. Like, every sphere, even, like, the outside spheres, like, have different side bubbles. Like, bro, it's not all the same shit. Like, one barbershop, you might go in and play some, like, uh, like, these bitches love so, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a gorilla in the fuck, you know what I'm saying? And then in the next one, they'll have some like, uh, you know, like, and it's all good, but like, bro, everybody's different. Like, and all it really shows at the end of the day is how out of. You ain't really hearing Khaled though. You ain't hearing another one. We the best. Uh, we got him again. Hit him again. This the one. This the hit. Sit <laughs> like, I don't know, bro. You can't just assemble Cardi B and. How do you play that in your fucking shop? Like, unless it's that one song. Bro, that's a, there's this one song that goes so hard with Lil Durk and Lil Wayne, uh, Lil, uh, Lil Baby. The bass on that is so insane, you actually can't even hear Khaled. So it's, it's fine to play anywhere. Is, 21 is, Savage onto a generic ass trap beat and expect people to love you and praise you and think you're a genius and think you're amazing. Things became even worse down in the comment section where one user highlighted it's worth mentioning that when Tyler dropped Flower Boy, it debuted at number two behind Lana Del Rey's album by just over a thousand units. Instead of being upset, he congratulated Lana and continued to flex his artistry even more with Igor, showing that Tyler acted humbly when placed in the same position. Therefore, everybody began to wonder. What was Tyler's Respond. You know, Lana Del Rey is great. Honestly, Lana Del Rey is really great. She gets a lot of shit more than she should. And I don't even listen to her shit. But, uh, I did listen to that shit. I still think T should have won, but, you know, I'm based. <laughs> I'm based. Showing that Bro, Flower Boy, number one, and then Igor, number one, both deserve, and it would have been a fucking banger. Back to back. Tyler acted humbly when placed in the same position. Therefore, everybody began to cold. wonder, what was Tyler's response going to be back to DJ Khaled? Well, in the beginning, Tyler stated that he simply let that number one position speak while using the brief window of opportunity to drive even more exposure back to his album. Wow, doing pretty good for some mysterious shit. Yeah, I am. Ego out now. With his Twitter exchange coming alongside a different response over on his Instagram. Rap media personality DJ Academics made a post reading, who had the better album to you? Tyler the Creator or DJ Khaled, to which Tyler would continue his trolling by commenting, who TF listens to Tyler the Felicia Creator, the which was pretty much all he'd say until over right. two years later. In June 2021, Tyler's next album, Call Me If You Get Lost, once again debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, prompting a new tweet by Tyler still roasting Khaled for what he'd said two years prior. Mysterious music, ha. Huh? That was funny. He kind of did a DJ Khaled thing with this album, with DJ Dram. But the way he did it was so beautiful. Like, we on a we on a yacht <laughs> with girls. They all got their toes out. We got French Vanilla ice cream too. Lost one. Like he pre he created a picture of getting lost within like honestly what feels like a Wes Anderson world, which I'm sure he would say because like he did the brown sugar salmon shit. But like a lot of that just feels like a like Budapest type vibes. Once again debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, prompting a new tweet by Tyler still roasting Khaled for what he'd said two years prior. Mysterious music, <laughs> ha. Huh? One month later, Tyler would appear in a Hot 97 interview. Bro, that Khaled was, thing was like, it was fun. It was just watching a man die inside because the, the weirdo was winning. I was moonwalking in a wig. Everyone on his album, everyone. And he wasn't wrong. Like, I'm not in the barber shop. 
I'm not at the club. I'm not did it, did it, skid it. I'm not in the back of the Maybach. So for some guy like that to kind of indirectly be the, like, Maybach that music. ain't real rap. That ain't real black music. That's what it felt like. However, this story actually has somewhat of a happy ending. DJ Khaled and Tyler the Creator squash beef at Rock Nation's pre-Grammy brunch, oh, nice. explaining that though Khaled nor Tyler didn't mention anything of it, the two posed for a quick picture together, appearing to confirm that there aren't any issues between them. The article referred to this picture Very posted nice. to DJ Khaled's Instagram, and considering on the hot- <laughs> Is that a croissant? Wait, hold- That looks like- that looks like he's at a show and tell. He's showing off this little croissant or pizza thing. Khaled's Instagram. I like the fit though. The green with the pink, the white, the brownie. And considering on the Hot 97 interview, Tyler said this. It's no hard feelings towards him. What he's done. And he was an underdog was too. Doing, and built his he way was, up too. Yes, from nothing. So like, from Pirate Radio. So I got, I do have some sort of respect for him. It's really no surprise that the two got together for a photo. Honestly, it's not hard. It, it's kind of hard not to have respect for Khaled, but it's also like hard not to goof on the motherfucker because he's so goofy, but he also has like a resume that's like, damn, dude, you're goofy, but you can't really like hate. You can, but you can't like there's some sort of respect, at least for me, I, I see there like bro's been here for years grinding and he made so many big hits in the past and even now he still he still makes big hits, but over the time. He just got more and more into himself, and he just kept going on. God did, Simpsons did, South Park did. Like, he's just saying a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? Like, keep it on TikTok. When he does it on TikTok, it's funny, but when it's in music, I'm like, man. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I can't take it, man. It just fucking hurts. It's too much.